Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I hope you can hear me. If you can, let me know in the comments or in the uh, chat, I should say. Let me know if the music is a little too loud. Sometimes that uh, uh, it's a little hard to tell from my end. So if you are in the chat, hopefully, uh, I'm seeing just two of you as of right now, but hopefully you can let me know if uh, the background music is just a little bit too loud for you or not. Um, I'm doing, I'm using a little bit different setup than what I have typically had again. So, you know what, I think I might bring up my phone too, because sometimes this dashboard does not show the, uh, the comments very well. Let's see what we got going here. We'll get started here in just a minute. Basically, uh, tonight we're going to, as long as I don't get interrupted by kids, we're going to, uh, we're gonna paint a few of these, uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Fire hydrants. So this one, as you can see right in the middle, is a finished one. Just putting my arm across here. Uh, to put my phone up so I can see the comments. So I've actually got four of these. I got this one all primed, ready to go. And then I've got three more. And the reason that uh, I've got so many of these is I wanted to be able to show you guys how I'm doing the black wash. And then... Um, It'll be dried. You don't have to wait for it to dry for me to show you the rest of it. So we'll do a black wash and then we'll go ahead and get started with the other uh, aspects of this. The paints that I am using, where is my black paint? Got it here somewhere. Let's just show you this. We got Apple Barrel Cheapo paint. You know, this is the black. Um, We've got some burnt umber. The primary color that we're gonna use is just a primary yellow. Nothing special about that. Um, and then we've got a raw sienna. And then we've got a, uh, what is this, a burnt orange. And then we've got uh, a mixture of some light brown something or other that I've basically just put a whole bunch of water in and so it really isn't, uh, I don't even know if it's actually this brown anymore. It's just a very, very light colored brown. So hopefully there's going to be enough time to get through all of these coats. That's why I uh, already did the black wash on a couple of these so that we can just keep moving along. So in that uh, same vein, we're just gonna go ahead and move on. We're gonna start with some black wash. Um, where is my little, I've already got it mixed up here. Just a little, little cup of black. Um, I like doing a fairly thin black and I've had this wash sitting here for a little bit. What I'm gonna actually do, I'm gonna slide these out of the way, is, I'm going to throw a piece of cardboard down. Hopefully that doesn't mess up with the uh, the video too much. Hopefully everything is still in focus. Let's check this out. Uh, not too shabby. Let's go ahead and adjust that just a little bit on my end. Yeah, that's a little bit better. All right. So I see that there's only three of you in the in the video right now or in the chat comment in the chat let me know that you're here otherwise it's a little bit weird um, so I'm just using this basic really simple brush black wash those of you that have done a black wash this is there's nothing new about this like I said I like to do this very very thin that way then it kind of gives just like a smoky look 
It doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot. It just darkens it a little bit. And I usually will start by getting all the harder to reach spots since I'm not using like one of those uh, helping hands. And then I don't get the paint too much on me. And this is, I mean, it doesn't need to be perfect whatsoever. Um, one thing that you might consider doing is get yourself a little fan, desk fan, something that uh, will speed up the drying process. We're locking out here because I've already got one or, or three of them dried off. So. so those of you that are watching, I see you guys are either doing other stuff or whatever, but uh, what are you doing this weekend? Are you guys working on dioramas, painting props? What are you get, What do you got going this week? Oh wait, it's not the weekend. <laughs> what is it? It's Wednesday. I'm on furlough right now, so uh, my sense of time is all messed up. All right, so essentially, black wash pretty much done. You can maybe see on here that uh, you really can't. It's it's a very light black I mean once it's dry it really ain't gonna look all that all that dark it's not gonna look all that black it's actually gonna look like a a very dark gray which is exactly what I want so we're gonna set this aside so it can dry and then all right so we got Adrian Mares Roma Roman and we got Ryan F and you're welcome for the videos. Um, I've got another tutorial coming up. I'm reaching for something, that's why it's getting a little quieter. Um, I've got another tutorial coming, hopefully soon. I won't divulge what it is. It's actually pretty simple. You just got all the TMNT Movie Turtles. Casey, uh, the Casey Raff two pack. I am still on the search for, and now I am on the hunt for the Casey cartoon and the um, what's the other one? The uh, uh, metalhead. Haven't been able to find it. All right, we're gonna set this paint aside. Um, I'm gonna go rinse this. I'm just gonna get some water. I forgot to get some water. I'll be right back. Okay, we are back. So we are going to take a small chance and uh, not use a back or a uh, drop cloth or anything. We're just gonna hope that we don't make a giant mess. All right, so wish me luck on that. All right, so we've got essentially we want to make this. Now this one's a slightly bigger just because I um, made it larger when I printed it. But, all right. Pedro Gallego, Gale Gallego, Gallego. How am I, am I pronouncing it even close? New to the channel, did you buy it or cast it? So these are 3D printed. I didn't even, I didn't even bring that up of how these came about. So they are 3D printed. Uh, these I did not design, um, but well, we'll just go ahead and give you a sneak peek. So this is one that I actually 3D print or, uh, designed myself. Let's go ahead and check that focus. So I designed this myself uh, for 3D printing. I'll have these available at some point. Um, one of the things that I think is kind of cool is I've made it so that 
um, it will be modular meaning these little caps will be able to come off and maybe I'll design other accessories maybe there will be like a fire uh, a fire hose accessory or a water spigot kind of accessory that might go along with it so you can swap those out so the idea that I wanted is, is to be able to not have to glue this thing together um, when you assemble it so that way then you can do more stuff with it so um, but yeah to answer your question Pedro these are 3d printed all right, so what we're gonna do, first paint coat that we are gonna start with is yellow. And I just realized I need, I need something to put my paint on. Holy cow, how did I forget that? I can't believe I forgot that piece. All right, I gotta find something. No! <laughs> What are we going to use? We'll just use some cardboard. I don't know where my paint cap went, or my paint cup. Anyway, so we're going to use standard yellow. Nothing special about it. Throw a little bit on here. Just a little. We'll add more as we need more. And then what we're gonna use is just a kitchen sponge. Um, now this is one of those scrubbers that you can get uh, just for washing dishes. So we're gonna use this. We're gonna just pull a little piece off, and I use this to begin with because it's just a little bit um, coarser. That way then, um, it goes on a little bit quicker, a little bit easier, and I get a little bit different look, the kind of the look that I'm wanting. And then, what I usually will start with is using my hands. And then, we're gonna dip that in, grab a paper towel, you know, we'll grab a new one. All right, we got a paper towel. And essentially this is exactly the same as dry brushing. So you're gonna dip it in your paint and then dab it off just a little bit and then just start throwing this stuff on. And you don't need to be all that perfect. Uh, and one of the things that I like about doing it this way, and this is gonna get you what I consider to be a very, very old look. I mean, you can see in this, it's just an old, worn uh, fire hydrant. There's, you know, nothing too spectacular about it. Um, you can certainly go with different styles, meaning, uh, you might go with um, maybe a newer, shinier look where it, it's a heavier yellow or red or whatever your primary color is, and then just add streaks of rust. But I'm making this as though it's been sitting out there for decades, and you don't really see any primary rust like streaks or anything. It's just all over the place. It's been sitting there, not getting used, not getting addressed by the city works or anything like that. And so the cool thing about using this is as you, you're gonna find if you're trying to do this yourself, you can't really get into these corners and that actually adds to the effect. And that's why we do the dry brush or the, uh, the uh, black wash and then the um, well, we do the priming of gray and then the black wash. We do that so that way then we get that nice dark look around those edges like it has corroded. So this takes a little while. Um, you usually want to add or let it sit and dry in between each coat because it might take 
a little bit to get the look that you're going for for the primary yellow. All right, so we got five. Everybody's busy. Everybody's out. They better not be out. You're not supposed to be out, right? You're supposed to be stuck at home. Everybody's going to bed. Ready for work tomorrow. I don't get to go to work tomorrow. I'm on furlough till the end of this week. Then I get to go back. So if you do have like an area like this, get yourself a set of tweezers. Now I've got uh, I've got an affiliate link. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'm gonna sell something to you. Um, I've got affiliate links for my Amazon deal that you can get a set of tweezers similar to these uh, if you're interested. They're very helpful to be able to um, kind of get it in there a little bit more than you could with your fingers so that's why I like I like using them so if you're interested there's should be a link in the description I think to my Amazon deal uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra it just uh, I get a little kickback so if you're needing something like that or other diorama supplies I've got a whole diorama supplies list that you can check out And you can you can um, leave it a little splotchy if you want. That's not a big deal. I mean, really, it, it's so forgiving this process that if you start not liking it, you just go back over it and fix it. And I'm finding I really like doing fire hydrants in yellow. Someone, and I forget who it was. <laughs> let me know that that um, the different color of these fire hydrants means like how much water pressure they're rated for Pfft, I had no idea I always just thought it was you know they just decided to go with red or they just decided to go with orange most of them around our place are orange and I think red is one of the lower water pressures so um, Yellow and orange are higher, if I remember right. All right, so this is a pretty good first coat. So we've got that one. That's not too bad looking. It's a good start. We're gonna cut a couple more of these going. try and go through these as quickly as we can. I just want that to dry just a little bit before I start with any more paint. Because otherwise, if you don't let it dry, the more you keep dabbing, you start just moving the paint around. You pull the paint off and you're not really being all that effective. So I spent the majority of the day today putting up a new, a new like real uh, mailbox. That's a pain in the butt. Went with a six by six post. It is massive. 
<laughs> it was so heavy and I was the only one working on it, so that um definitely uh tested my strength. But I did it. I did it all on my own. It was a Herculean action. Not really. done with this bad boy. If we need more paint. I try to pour as little paint as I can because I absolutely hate Wasting and I get this paint is some of the cheapest stuff that you can find. I just you know I don't like wasting paint and uh, More often than not my preference also is rather than buying 500 different little bottles of every little color um, What I do is I, I For the, like the rust colors I buy those but otherwise I buy um, primary colors and then I mix my mix my paints it just uh, it, it does make it a little bit harder to match if you need to come back later but uh, or if you you know don't pour out and make enough but as long as you kind of keep track of what the mix was you can usually you can usually pretty easily recreate it and there's actually YouTube videos out there where people kind of walk you through if you want to make, say, burnt umber, what colors you need to make that, which is nice. So, and it saves space. And it's nice because then if you really do, you know, you run out of a color, you just make it. Not too bad. All right, so that's pretty good. And we're gonna hit this last one just so that it is matching. All right, don't be afraid. Sound off in the chat. Even if you're just letting me know what you're doing. What are you doing? It gets lonely. Just working on this all by myself. I know there's a few of you in there. <laughs> I may do a uh, shortened tutorial on this uh, technique at some point as well um, just because I know this is gonna wind up being probably an hour long hopefully not more than an hour long
sponge is kind of falling apart. I think I broke it off in a weird way. Do this before. Oh well. You know what? I forgot to um, post on my social that I'm doing this video. I should post it in the uh, diorama um, HQ. So if, if those of you that are watching, um, if you're not already a member, uh, go to Facebook, either now or when you have a chance, um, and look up Diorama HQ. I might even have that in the description already. Uh, it's a new Facebook group for Diorama creators. Um, it's, we're getting close to, a t to 200. You know, isn't that many yet, but uh, the activity levels are very much going up. There's a lot of really talented people already in there. Um, it's a good place to be able to showcase your work and then also to uh, you know ask questions and, and what have you. So I think we'll let that one start drying. We're gonna take a moment and I'm just gonna share that uh, this is live right now. I forgot to do that. very professional uh, out outfit going on here right now Posted. And let's go ahead and put it on the on my my own tech chucker Facebook. Why not? And then we'll get back to this. I needed a little time for that to dry anyway. Okay, we're back didn't take too long. All right, so we're gonna add just a little bit more yellow on this bad boy, um, just so that it pops. And then we're gonna start covering it with some of our rust colors. We're gonna make this thing look nasty and old. Just a little more paint down. So, I don't recommend using cardboard as your paint palette. I do not know where my paint palette went. Um, I don't recommend it because cardboard is very absorb absorbent, has a high absorption property, so it starts taking the moisture out of your paint. So I would recommend using a paint palette of some sort, you know, plastic or metal. Thinking about getting a metal one at some point. Why not? Something a little higher quality. So the key here is if you really want to get that old look, you don't want you don't want to cover, you know, 100%. You want to have some of that darkness still hanging out. That looks pretty good. And but you also want the yellow to still pop. And 
And some of this stuff, the order, doesn't matter that much. I mean, yeah, you need to start with your black wash and your base coat. But we are going to come back later and add a little bit more of the base coat. So, you know, worst case scenario, if it doesn't turn out looking the way that you like, you can add more. Just add more paint. Things are really falling apart. I think it's because I went against the grain. enough and we'll do one last little bit for this guy before this thing completely falls apart so obviously the larger the uh, sponge you use the less likely you're gonna get it all over your fingers, which I uh, have systematically yellowed my fingers. Not awesome, but whatever. All right, so name of the game is kind of splotchy. That's kind of what you want. All right, I'm assuming you guys can hear me. Let me see. I'm a little worried that you guys can't even hear me. So nobody's really responding to me. All right, let's 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 try this. I'm just gonna play it. Okay, good. I could hear myself. <laughs> okay. That's good. I was getting a little bit worried that nobody could hear me. Okay, next up, we're gonna put this aside and we are going to, using the same same uh, sponge, the more coarse one. And when I say more coarse, it's because I have another one. This is actually just a soap scrubber. Um, I forget what it is, but it's it's this one is very, very fine. It's, it's not nearly as coarse. We're gonna come back to this in a little bit but I want to start with another coarse one for the burnt umber so we're starting with uh, the next or I guess I would say the first rust color going darker we'll go lighter or from darker to lighter now this we obviously don't want to put near as much on otherwise you're just gonna completely cover all of your yellow and then that I mean that's pointless so essentially you start dabbing it just like if you're familiar with your dry brushing same basic thing just start dabbing it till it's a little bit lighter and on this there's certain rust areas that you want to focus on obviously you're not gonna go with the whole thing now I do on this one I did a fair amount but I focused on the creases and what have you and then at the bottom so that's what we're going to attempt to do here as well so start at the bottom and you may not notice a whole heck of a lot to begin with that's fine and you may find that you know what you can start adding or, or not um, dabbing as much off if you want it to go on a little bit faster but another thing that I like to try and do it's a little bit harder with a, a bigger piece like this is to focus kind of like a rounded like it's it's coming down and then it rounds out because the water is gonna start spreading so if you're able to now there's another uh, technique um, I forget uh, Tom's dioramas I think it is um, where you actually use a brush and and you thin it out um, we're not going for that that look specifically 
um, because this is a very, very old um, fire hydrant, and it's been in the elements for a very, very long time. And so there's less definition that I want out of my rust. Whereas if it's maybe a little bit newer, you're going to have that streaking style of rust. And then the other thing that you may find is if you do think that you put just a little bit too much, you can use a dryer part and kind of dab some of it away so that it's not um, as obvious if, if you think that you kind of messed it up. And in the end with this, if <laughs> if you're trying to get that that um, uniform or not uniform that look of it's been spreading and it doesn't work then just do the whole thing who cares and then it looks really really old and nasty and nobody knows that that wasn't the look that you were going for so now we're gonna just go around we're gonna throw this on get into those cracks and I mean knowing how gravity works you're likely to have a little bit more corrosion on the bottom as opposed to on the, the top but no not not necessarily always is there not going to be any so and you know go find pictures on the internet you can find tons of pictures of old nasty looking stuff you'll get a good idea as to how the rust is going to kind of behave so and on the back when there's nothing there you might have a little bit less just a little bit Out. any place that there's a weld like around this rim I would say in terms of weathering, this is probably one of the easiest techniques that you can start using. For me at least it has been. It takes a little bit of time, but pretty easy. Because really you're just dirtying it up for the most part. There. So if we put it side by side, you can start seeing a little bit different you know look between the two it's a little eh, maybe you can't on screen but i can <laughs> it's a little bit subtle come back to that we'll do one more of these and then we'll move on to the next color we don't need to do all three of these necessarily
another technique um, that I'm hoping to try. I tried it ages ago, is the, the salt technique, uh, where essentially you take like a rock salt and uh, with, with water you kind of wet it down or wet the, the item down and then you take that salt and you stick it on where you want um, it to peel and then um, you know you paint over it with your, your your main color and then you peel that away when I did that I couldn't get the salt off so I did something wrong the first time I tried it and never came back to it but uh, some people do do it really really well and it looks really really cool when they do it so I gotta come back and try that again all right so that's looking pretty good so far <clears throat> boy there really is <laughs> nobody wants to talk in the chat that is a bummer I've really been doing this for almost an hour, 45 minutes. That is crazy. Hey, legendary Super Saiyan Broly, customize some of your figures. Cool. What figures? Oop, I lost my screen. <clears throat> Let me know what figures. I'd love to know. Yeah. All right. I think so. While I wait for a response, we are gonna do another color. But this time we're going to do something a little bit different. You're going to hear some noise because I'm getting a little cup. So I like these little, these are just like little shot glasses that you can get. F-N-A-F and NECA. F-N-A-F. I have no idea what that means. F-N-A-F. Huh. Anyway, I like these little cups. They're throwaway. Those are kind of fun for mixing, uh, especially if you have to water something down, which we need to for this next paint. So we're going to do, it is the, what is this color? The burnt orange. So we're going to throw a little bit of that in there. And then we're going to water this down a little bit. And for the brush, we'll probably use... Um, we'll see, this little tiny one might work. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this one is it's got synthetic um, bristles, and they don't always... Like when they get wet, they don't like... peak, which I don't like. Oh, Five Nights at Freddy's, okay. You know, I did one review of a Five Nights at Freddy's figure and I was so excited because they looked really cool. I never played the game and I gotta be honest they were so bad. The articulation that was from Funko. The articulation was so bad they would fall off. It would be kind of cool to see what you did though. Alright so I want this fairly thin we're gonna throw a little more water in. Um, my cup makes it look like this water is in a black, but it's not. It's um, it's clear water. The the paint just dried on that cup ages ago. I'm very cheap. I don't throw stuff away. All right, so this might be a good consistency. So you want it to be able to run. At least I do. Cause I just want a subtle look. This might work. Worst case scenario, we just paint over it. All right, so we're gonna go back to this guy, and this we're just gonna do around the edges. You know, in in the creases, and so you just, you know, I'm shaking. Dab it in, and as it goes, it's gonna if it's if it's the right consistency. Meaning, if it's um, thin enough, it will start kind of draining down into the rest of the crease. And that's what we want. We want to have that filled in just a little bit with this rust color. 
And this might even be just a hair thicker than I still want. Seen a video of people who want NECA to make... Oh, okay. Honestly, anybody could do them better than uh, Funko. At least the very first wave. And I never... I, I never... I don't know anything about Five Nights at Freddy's, but... Um, I thought they looked cool. This was back when I first started collecting. I was like, I gotta have these. These are really cool looking. And uh, I bought one and so disappointed because the legs would fall off, the arms would fall off. There we go. That's a little bit better. We're going to let that sink in. And then we'll just do a little dab. You may or may not be able to see that. Oh, this is still kind of thick. Darn you. Well, thank you. I'm glad that you think that it does look real. Because that is the intention here. Way too thick to begin with. Okay, now we can thin it. And... So if you want, you can certainly draw this down. That's kind of the method that I was talking about that... Uh, um, Tom, I think it's Tom's dioramas was doing. Um, his is a little bit different though. Um, because that is like the key p piece of the... Um, the rust. Mine is not. Mine is more key on the burnt umber, I guess. But I like just getting these little creases filled. And because this is so thin when it dries, it's a little more subtle. At least it's supposed to be. There we go. I just pop it in right at the top here. Let it drain down. Honestly, I mean, you almost can't, you can't mess this up. Uh, which character was it? It was whatever the main little bear guy was. Um, I don't. I think it's Freddy. Yeah, I think I got Freddy. And uh, it was like series one or wave one or however they register those. All right, so. Oh, we didn't get this all the way around. Oh, we might get the under. Hey, you know what? I um, I do my best to try and put out good enough videos, and I'm glad that uh, glad that people enjoy enjoy them. I wish I could put out more videos. Just don't usually have time. I think you were on uh, on my last live stream, weren't you? Well, it was actually just a 3D um, 3D print monitored <laughs> video. I think I don't think it was even like a legit video. Try and get this little top bit. Be some rust up there. Pop that around. Yep, yeah, that's what I thought. I recognized the name. All right, so we're gonna let that kind of dry. We'll do this next one. Hopefully, it will have started to dry a little bit. Um, that's the difficulty of doing these kinds of videos is if it hasn't dried sometimes you can't you just can't move on to the next stage 
then you're sitting around dinking around with nothing to do. We're gonna hit some of these uh, bolts, make sure that they get some rust around them. You know, these 3D printers sure are fun. Um, takes a fair amount of research to really start figuring out the uh, little idiosyncrasies of, you know, the technicalities of getting this stuff just right. Like those little cameras. I don't know if you saw those cameras that I did. My goodness, that was a pain in the butt to find just the right little uh, settings to get those working. Mainly because the printer that I have is really just not made to do that fine of detail. We can get this to really go the way I wanted it, but whatever. You know, those, the, the, the printer that I got is pretty inexpensive. Now, I'm not sure how old you are, so I don't know how, you know, how expensive things are for you. But, uh, you know, 3D printer, I got mine for 190 bucks shipped. That's not bad to be able to get started with this sort of thing. I don't know why age mattered. <laughs> Alright, what do we got? You see that they made a venomized cap. I didn't. Did uh, Hasbro release it or reveal that? I literally have not been paying attention to any of the SDCC stuff. Uh, any of the... Well, I guess it would have been SDCC. I forget what they're calling it now. Like Fan Friday or something like that. All right, so I need another piece of paper towel. So is that is that guy, is it pretty cool looking, the venomized? I mean, it sounds like it's gotta be. All right, so we're gonna just tamp down some of this just to speed up the process of drying. And actually sometimes damping or tamping or dabbing, whatever, whatever the word is, um, gives you the look that you're looking for. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do. It was a little bit too harsh for my liking on some of this. So we're just taking it down a notch and we're getting it to dry. Like I said, having a fan is always a good idea. All right, so we're gonna let that do its thing. I got a lot on this one, so we're gonna pop this off a little bit. Oof, yeah, that really got, got in there a lot. Pull some of that off, let it dry off. Also saw they leaked a uh, image of a two-pack. Yeah, I saw that one. I saw that one. That one looks cool. All right. Probably pulled more off of that than I needed to. Okay. So the next thing that I kind of want to do is, God, you know, it's not quite dry enough. might take too long to do the drying um, what I was gonna do is take this very 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 um, watered down brown and yeah it does re it reminds me of the Arkham City as well um, I was gonna put this on and it basically you just kind of dab it around but I, I think it's too wet still for that we might be able to do a little bit more of the burnt umber to bring some of this down, but it is just still a little bit, 
Eh, let's let's do it. Um, we may not actually be able to finish this, but just want to bring this down a little bit more. Otherwise, it just looks too orange on the yellow. A little too burnt umber. Usually yellow is difficult to work with, at least on action figures. On these little uh, fire hydrants, it is pretty easy to work with, especially for this rust look. I actually found trying to um, weather my uh, red, let me show you here, I think I weathered this one. You almost can't see any of it. A little pain in the butt. I didn't print this one. This was uh, Rhino Dioramas. He did that one. Printed it off anyway. And then I painted it. Some of that burnt umber got a little bit too harsh. I'm gonna bring that down. The other thing to know is as you're painting these things is the camera is actually fairly um, kind to a paint job. <laughs> I noticed that with the um, little cameras that I made, it uh, really looked very nice. Worked very well, which was good. All right, that looks pretty good. And then we might, I don't know, I don't know how much longer I want to go. Alright, okay, if you think about it, kids are toy hunters. Um, yeah, I think the majority of the um, Marvel Legends customer base has got to be adults. Feels like it. I'm not saying that there aren't kids that are buying that stuff, but uh, I feel like it's got to be way more adults. Alright, that one's looking a lot more uh, beat up than the other one. You know, I think I need to let this dry, and otherwise my next coats are going to just mesh together. So, we just hit about an hour. I think we're gonna cut this. Um, basically, the next steps are to take this really, really watered down, lighter brown, and just kinda lay that down in random spots, not throughout the entire thing. And then, what I do, what do I do? Oh, then I take my yellow. I come back over with the yellow just a little bit. And I dab that just to kind of bring the yellows back just a little bit uh, with this particular one. And then the last thing that I do is um, I'll take something like this raw sienna or I'll use the burnt umber and I'll, I'll water it down just a little bit and then I'll use a brush like this and I'll just flick it on so that it makes little spots. Um, if I get time, I might go ahead and do that last little bit uh, in another video. I don't know, but um, I mean, this looks pretty darn good so far. I think that uh, uh, to get to this final product, 
we're pretty darn close to that as it is so um, really appreciate that you guys join me I know I'm cutting this off a little bit short but uh, that's because I need to let these things dry otherwise it's just gonna look like terrible so thank you very much I will uh, see you guys later